know, how much performance do you need, right? I mean, lordy, 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 lordy. I mean, when you really get into the throttle on this car, this car moves significantly to the point where, you know, you get a little white knuckled and a little bead of sweat comes up, you know? But at the same time, you've got seven gears, so like right now, I can go ahead and drop it into seventh gear. Look at that, I'm doing no RPMs. The car gets quiet. It turns into a GT car. I got a comfortable seat. I got a nice sound system and it's, and it's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So how many cars are that wonderful dual personality car, right? Where you get all that performance and fun factor and shifting and all that. And then you also get just this really comfortable buttery car. Again, 911s, they just, the do all sports car. So I really hope you enjoy my thoughts on the car guys and uh, really appreciate you having me on the channel. Like and subscribe. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Driven Productions. My name is Adam and uh, we're happy to have you here. Oh, this should be our 300th video on the channel, if you can believe that. So welcome back to the HQ. I'll send a little B-roll clips here of my uh, new place that I just finished up. We're moving in. We just finished pretty much. So I think last Friday we had to get a scissor lift out here and rent some stuff. It was crazy. But we are talking about a Porsche 991.2. I know that's an awful name, but it is what it is. This is a 2017 Carrera 4S. Now this is a car that I personally think the market is absolutely sleeping on. Nobody will question the fact that Porsche is maybe the hottest car brand in the world right now. And I also believe that there are very few cars that are more desirable on the market currently than the GT4 RS and of course the GT3 RS. Both of them are still going well over MSRP. You get a GT4 RS, one on bring a trailer just sold this week. It went for 217 before a $5,000 buyer's fee on bring a trailer. So that means those cars, even in this, in this climate with interest rates over eight and a half percent are still bringing well north of 50,000 over ask. And the GT3 RS has yet to sell below $400,000 yet. So that is still hundred to 150 over asking, uh, just insane. But here's an opportunity guys for you to own an incredible car. This is the do all sports car period. End of story. You can just go ahead and close the book. It is the do all sports car. This has a 420 horsepower, three liter twin turbo engine. I know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the 4S, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the 4S. It's not the turbo. No, 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 no. So in the 991 generation, they went with essentially you can see there's no 4s sd batch but they got rid of the 3.8 liter flat six and they went to a three liter okay and they added a turbocharger it's essentially in a lot of ways the same power plant that's in the turbo s and in fact if you were to put a tune on this vehicle you can actually get this car to be the same horsepower roughly as a turbo out of the box this car has 13 pounds of boost and a turbo has 16 pounds of boost so there you go is it a significantly different no and in fact i actually think the guy who understands that can save himself a very nice amount of money buy this car and go ahead and throw a nice tune on it. this is a 17,000 mile car. So this is a car that you can get a great deal on. $135,000 MSRP. I'm selling this car right now for in the low to mid 90s. This is going to be listed for 97,995. That's roughly a 35 to 40% discount off of MSRP. Hi right, guys, I uh, it started to rain as you saw. So I brought it inside. Uh, you know, here's the inside of the HQ, by the way. All right, so I uh, thought I might um, show you the paperwork here for a second and then we'll we'll get on to the point of view drive but uh frank i really appreciate you keeping on your original paperwork my man i appreciate that guarantee you didn't think you'd be in a video like this but here is uh you know mr Kloss. he uh, he signed it and as they they tend to do but i mean guys this is a great spec you know paint, painted vehicle key leather leather key pouch got the Bose GT steering, like I said, you got the sunroof, light design package, smoking package, which is nice because you have that little thing in the middle there. You have rear axle steering, love that. That is such a nice feature that came out with the 991 generation. Sport exhaust, the 20 inch RS wheels, you got Sport Pasm, makes it 20 inches lower for the, uh, you know, the suspension. You got Sport Package, Sport Chrono. 18-way seats are fantastic, like I said. 
Then you have the interior package also painted in black, which is nice. If you didn't know that, I'll go ahead and throw a B-roll clip of what that is. Uh, the tinted tail lights are kind of cool too. So very good, very good spec, 134,000 made in 2016. So they did restyle the front end a little bit on the 991.2, just some extra little things they put up front here. But I really am a fan of just the overall styling. I really like this light here. And uh, this has the LED lights as well. Here, I'll go ahead and grab the key and I'll show you what they look like. They really do look good uh, at night and just you know everyday driving as you can see. And that just to me looks great. I think that's gonna age like a fine wine. Now, as you come around to the side, you notice these are the RS style wheels. These are 20 inch wheels, they're staggered. So you get 245 fronts and 305 rear tires. Also keep in mind, these are not the Porsche carbon ceramic brakes. They're called PCCB brakes. These are not. So these are gonna be way better for the street. They're not gonna cause nearly as much uh, creaking and, and just overall uh, sound when you're coming to a stop, especially when they're cold. I will tell you, the brakes, uh, those PCCBs when they're cold, they definitely are very bitey and or they squeal. And that's just something I've experienced with just about every car I've ever driven. Some people tell me they don't, but in my experience, it's been almost 100% when they're cold. Now, this also has the smoked out taillights. It also has the PASM. So Sport PASM allows Porsche to come and lower it a little bit. So you can see here, the stagger of this car is just a little bit tighter than you might find in a stock one. That's a nice upgrade. This also has the Sport exhaust, which looks like that right there. So it's a, it's a nice upgrade. It's got a lot of burbles and pops. Uh, when you let off the fuel, we're gonna take a point of view drive here and you'll see that. Now this has the sport package. So that gives you this style mirror right here. And it also gives you uh, rear steering, which is really nice when we're doing the drive, you do recognize the rear steering. But another nice feature that the sport package has is this right here. So you get the GT steering wheel. And this is kind of like the Ferrari, you know, Manatino switch where you get to adjust from sport to Sport Plus, and that is a really nice feature, I have to say. Now, this does have the seven-speed manual, so it doesn't have the PDK. You know, Porsche is one of the rare manufacturers where I actually recommend the PDK, typically over a manual. The exception to the rule is actually this car. Now, I don't think you're gonna take a 911 4S on the track. You could 100%, but I don't think you will. So if you're gonna spec a GT car, meaning you're gonna get you know, something like a GT4 Cayman, or you're gonna get a GT3, or you're gonna get something like that, I highly recommend you go with the PDK okay. because for the track, it is so much better. Now with the PDK, this particular car will go to 60 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds, which is pretty darn fast, guys. I mean, let's be honest, that's pretty supercar fast. Now without the PDK, I think you could probably get this car to 60 in roughly 3.5 seconds. I just don't think you're gonna be able to do much better than that. Uh, so you definitely lose some performance, but the manual is wonderful. You can literally go 80, 85 miles an hour and be revving 2000 RPMs in seventh gear. The clutch is great. It has sport match rev, you know, what they call a sport rev or rev match. And it really does work great. You can throw it down from 5,000 or 6,000 RPMs into the lower gear and it'll match your RPM. So it really helps with clutch degradation and just fun factor, frankly, which is allow, allows you to really push this car on the track or on the street a lot more than you otherwise might. Um, outside of that, guys, this has the 18-way adjustable seats. I do think if you're looking for my advice, having reviewed now a couple of dozen Porsches, I recommend you get the 18-way seats. This also has the crest. You can probably see that on the seat right there. But this right here is such a wonderful seat. And I'll tell you why I love it. Because you have the option of adjusting this right here. This is really a game changer for your lower back. So when you're on a long trip, you know, you could, you could push this up, you can do the bolstering here. And it, for me, it's just world-class comfortable. I mean, you could do eight, 10 hours in this car. Whereas if you spec the GT you know, bucket seats, you are going to be hating your life in about two hours if you don't get up. Uh, it is not a comfortable seat. So again, if you're specking a GT Porsche, get the sport buckets. Don't even think about the 18 ways or the 14 way seats. Just get the sport buckets, okay? If you got a 4S like this car is, I recommend the opposite. I think you should get these seats. Now, outside of that, note this has the sunroof. 
I love a sports car with a sunroof, guys, and it really does work well. It doesn't you know, buffle or baffle, whatever the hell the term is for wind. It really is pretty quiet, and uh, overall, I like it. You can also see the sport package comes with the sport chrono, and overall, I mean, this doesn't even have the upgraded leather extended package. You can get this all leather stitched and whatnot, and it still looks just fine. So you don't necessarily have to go for the premium packages for everything. I mean, Porsche, you can get all of this. You can get all of this wrapped. You can get all of this extra wrapped. They just go crazy. This one doesn't have that. It's more of a driving package, this particular car. You could also get this different color. This is obviously the blacked out version of that. So overall, I think that the owner <clears throat> was really mindful in specking this particular car. I think he configured a great car that is perfect for the street, perfect for the track. But in the end of the day, he didn't spring for 20, 30, $40,000 in extra options and got the car to like, you know, 150, $160,000, which you can do with these. And you start getting PTS colors, you start putting in the $8,000 carbon ceramic brakes, the GT seats. I mean, boom, you're, you, you've literally added over $25,000 right there. But the guys who buy these cars, they're real car enthusiasts. They're real car guys. They appreciate the precision of the Porsche. The driving experience is second to none. The build quality is second to none, right? The value proposition is second to none. They're not interested in, sh in, in sharing with the world how rich they are. Every Porsche guy I've ever met, they're not looking for the guy at the gas station to come over to them and be like, hey man, nice car, you know, what do you do? Like, they're not looking for that. They're looking for the opposite. They're looking for just like, people who, who buy GT3 RSs and stuff, they might be looking for a little bit of that. I mean, that is a fact, okay? But this particular car, this is the car that you just, you get in because you love driving, because you love the brand, because you understand what the product is. It's not about stunting. All right, real quick, I wanna just talk about a few more things. One is practicality. Guys, this is one of the most practical sports cars on the market, why? You've got a front trunk, you can actually get some decent luggage in, and you also have rear seats. So with my Vanquish, you have rear seats and they're completely useless, but you also have nice rear seats back here that you can put some child bolsters in. So if you have like a six-year-old, you can absolutely take them, have some fun. You probably know this, you can't actually see the engine at all. So if you go over here, and you push this button, you'll... that's it. And you know, it's one thing I love about the 997 and up generations of Porsche. You know, you can actually see the power plant, but that's it, that's all you get. You can put your fluids in here and your oil, but that's all she wrote. So overall, that's it. Let's get into this point of view drive. I just wanna cover those things because it's a really practical car. And I think if you're looking to buy it, you should absolutely know that this is a car. It's easy to get it in and out of. It's easy to get and enjoy, take on road trips, you know, rallies, et cetera. It's kind of just the do all sports car. Porsche just has it nailed. And by the way, I really love this, the style of the 991. I love that it's a little bit smaller than the 992. You know, the reality is guys, every generation since like, the first generation, the car's just getting fatter. They need to go on a diet again. Hi guys, we are driving the 911 Porsche Carrera 4S. We are in sport mode here. The car is fully warmed up now. The gears are meshed. It just feels like a great car. We're on some of my favorite back roads here, literally in the middle of nowhere. And uh, you know, I just wanted to share with you what this car can do. Nothing crazy, okay? We're gonna respect the law. But I'm gonna do one run out for you real quick. So this is a fourth gear pull. And that's 92 miles an hour right there, you know? It's got plenty of performance, right? Like really, really good levels of performance in this car. And it's because of that turbo. So the torque band in this in this car, you know, where, where the old school 911s, they were really, really, you, you just had to rev the heck out of them, guys, you know, to get really any power. But this particular car, I mean, right there coming out of that turn, oh, just butter, you know? You really have all of the performance from 1700 RPMs all the way up. And I love that about the car. And so not only do you get better fuel economy, but you also just get that lovely usable power for the everyday driving. And that's what turbos are just great for. They really give you such a more driving balanced, you know, more dynamic driving in all situations, you know. Now, do you get the sound that you might get in the old school Carreras? No, I, I, I honestly, 
think these sound a little bit more like vacuum cleaners, but overall, it does sound pretty good as you can hear. It still sounds like a flat six. So I don't think you're necessarily gonna miss that that uh, that that 911 uh, naturally aspirated engine. I'll be honest with you. I think you if you drove them both back to back, I think you would choose this one to live with, just because of the fact that it has that beautiful torque curve. You know, bottom line. Now the cool part about this particular car too is because it's turbocharged, just like the turbo version. You could throw an aftermarket tune on the car. Now this is a seven year old car, so it's already out of warranty. So there's no downsides to that. And you know, make sure that you do it right. You know, make sure that you build up the engine so that it can support the kind of power that you're looking to put into it. But here's the thing, this, excuse me, this runs 13 foot pounds of boost and the turbo runs 16 pounds of boost. So like I said, all you gotta do is a little bit of a tune and you can have 911 turbo levels of performance, but you don't have to pay 911 turbo prices, you know, but you get all the other benefits because this is the 4S. So the turbo is all wheel drive, this is all wheel drive, you know, and you got, you got some cool things built into the cockpit here as well. You got your G-force meter, you got your shift assist, sport chrono package, you got your torque split. That's really cool. It's mostly rear bias, but you know, if you're in inclement weather or you're in, uh, you know, just a really cold day or you're coming out of a turn a little bit too too hot right it's going to go ahead and give you that front you know bias that, that you can pull yourself out without losing the car i mean really guys this is a lot of car a lot of car for the street but a very easy car to drive i mean it has a ton of performance it really does it you know these these 911s i i swear to god i think they're underrated from the factory i mean how does it do a, a sub 12 second you know quarter mile run you know, low to mid three, 60, you know, 60, uh, you know, you know, zero to 60 pulls. I mean, it's, it's just hard to believe that these, these cars are not, you know, 420 horsepower to the wheels. Right. Um, but you know, I think they underrate them a little bit. Maybe there's a dyno of the world out there that will verify that, but overall just the driving experience is just fantastic. You know, I love the, the weight of the clutch. I love the weight of the steering. Um, I just love everything about it. I love the brake feeling. These sport brakes are more than enough for the street. They don't squeal. Uh, they're just fantastic. The only real negative of these brakes, frankly, is that they're going to cause quite a bit more brake dust than your Porsche carbon ceramic. So if you're a real anal guy when it comes to keeping those black wheels clean, you're going to have to definitely ceramic coat them and just get used to cleaning them a lot after a spirited drive like this one. Because in the end of the day, I mean, look at that torque curve though. Oh, just 25 to 30% throttle and I feel like I have power everywhere. I just love that about these new engines. I mean, as a driver, I feel like I've got such a, a more capable car than I otherwise did, you know, and that's because of the turbo. I think if you take that out and, and you know, eat, unless you get the four liter, because the four liter does have a little bit more low end grunt just because there's more fuel physically going through the engine. But even those cars, guys, you know, you really got to run them out to really enjoy them. Uh, this is a car you don't have to do that. You just don't have to run it out that much to have a lot of fun. And I love that about it. You know, I love the rev matching and, you know, Porsches are such a rare breed of car that the more you push them, the better they feel. You know, the gears, they warm up, they mesh better, right? The brakes warm up, the suspension warms up. It's just like right now, this car feels better than when I first got in it. And I love that about it. I just, I think that's such a cool part of the, the 911 experience. The Cayman experience is very similar. You know, these cars just are very organic. And the more that you push it, the more that you enjoy it, the better it feels, the better it drives. And what a cool experience to take a car on the track and it feels better on lap nine than it did on lap one, right? You know, a lot of these old school cars, you can't do that. Even the Corvettes of the world, you know, especially the C7, they used to get heat soaked and they go into lip mode and all this crazy stuff happens, right? So these cars, that just doesn't happen, you know? They're just such great, you can beat on them, you can really have a good time and they're pretty damn bulletproof, you know? Change the oil, change the spark plugs, you know, make sure you get the servicing done as it's supposed to. I think you just get on it, you know, have fun. <clears throat> now, the other thing I wanna mention, you know, this does have a seven speed. So 
I'm gonna demonstrate what it's like at 80. I'm not gonna get on the highway today because I don't really think I need to. There you go, I'm, I'm dumping it at two right there and you can see plenty of torque to get out of that. You don't have to be, you know, always revving it out. Uh, it's just such a cool nature of this car. And I don't know how they make it perform as well as it does with rear engine bias, but man, this car is just so good. It, it drives like a mid-engine car, you know? And that sport rev match makes it so easy. I will mention that in most of the Porsches that I've been in, there's zero rattling, but this particular one, there is a little bit of rattling going on over here on the right side of the car. It looks sounds like the, uh, the pillar here in front of the passenger. It's not bad. It's not nearly as bad as any of my old Teslas, but you know, if it, just keep in mind, you know, this is a seven year old car. I'm gonna take it out of sport mode and just go to normal mode, soften it up a little bit. It is noticeable on the street, frankly. The difference between sport mode and uh, and you know and regular mode, you definitely know. You know, if you want to open up, if you want to open up the sunroof here, get some fresh air. Look at that, guys. Now, now I've got an open driving experience. I just love that about this car. I love a sunroof. I'm an absolute sucker for a sunroof. You know, I enjoy having it open on a nice sunny day. You know, it just, it adds a lot of fresh air and you can keep the AC off and you get to hear the exhaust a little bit more. And you know, yeah, you definitely know it's open. You can hear it in the wind, but you know, it's just, it's just cool. You know, it's all the benefits of having a convertible without any of the negatives, right? So and everything that you need or want in a sports car. You know, it gives you the performance, it gives you the driving experience, it's fun, it's engaging, it's subtle, you know, it's not, like, especially in black, you know, this is a car that I think you could really have some fun and get away with murder more than most cars. Uh, some of these cars out there that I review, you know, I got to constantly be looking for law enforcement and constantly looking to kind of see where the Karens are going to be reporting me, right? This is one of those vehicles that I don't think I have to do that, and I really love that about it. You can just get in and, uh, and do it. It have auto blip, and it also has auto stop technology. So I just pulled to a complete stop there. It's actually the first time I've stopped on this whole drive, and uh, it did turn the engine off. So just keep that in mind. It's one of those settings that you can disable, but you're gonna have to do that manually each time. That's gonna, that could get a little bit annoying, I know. But man, I gotta say, now that I've been driving it for a while, the gears are all nice and meshing perfectly. It just feels so good. You know, these cars really require a warm up period to, uh, to just slot right. And uh, again, they, the more you drive them, the better they feel. It's one of those rare breeds of cars that does that. Uh, but anyway, guys, I, I hope that you enjoyed the driving, uh, the POV drive. Um, I, I, you know, if you if you have one of these in the stable or you've driven them before, or you're looking to buy one, you have some questions, you know, let me know. Uh, I will say that honestly, like this is a kind of this is a car that I would buy for myself. Honestly, like it's just it's that good. It, it gives me everything I'm looking for from a car. It's it's got it's got the value proposition with the depreciation that's already happened, right? It's got the performance with the turbo and the torque curve. It's got the manual, so it's got the all-day engagement. Fun factor I'm looking for, I'm not looking to drive this to work every day. I'm not looking to drive this in inclement weather, right? So I don't require the PDK. Love the PDK. If you're gonna take it on track, I would encourage you to get the PDK consistently. It's, it's just a fantastic transmission. But for the weekend warrior car, this damn thing checks every flipping box, right? Looks, check. Performance, check. Comfort, check. You know, the ability to, to take it on a road trip and be somewhat practical, check, right? Like, where's the downside? Price, check. You know, fuel economy, check. I mean, this car is not gonna get eight to 10 miles a gallon like some of these GT500s is gonna get, right? I mean, this car is gonna get low 20s. Hell, if you like, baby it on the highway at 2,000 RPMs, I wouldn't be surprised if you got maybe 24, 28 miles a gallon, honestly. Like, yeah, you're gonna have to put premium in it, but damn, that's really good fuel economy at that point. So anyway, 
hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I love sharing these. I love making content. I love reviewing Porsches. I mean, these are these are absolutely my favorite brand of car to review. I've done more Porsche content on the channel than probably anything else, and it's because there's a reason. Anytime I get a chance to drive a Porsche, I'm always a, yep, I'll take it. You know, let's put it on camera, my man. Even if it's just a 4S, it's not a GT product, right? Because in the end of the day, the trickle-down technology from the GTs ends up in this car, and, you, you know, for the street, you're getting way more car than you can use as it is. So there's just no reason to go and spend 225,000 to 250,000 right now and get a brand new GT3 when you can spend under a hundred grand and have something like this. Like, God dang it. Where do I sign? You know, like this is such a good car for the money. Anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Well guys, if you made it this far into the video, really appreciate you watching. If you like the content, subscribe, share this with a friend. You know, we've been doing this since 2000, really 20. I got serious, did about a video a week since 2020. So we've been doing this for about four years now. Uh, we just got to 3 million views on YouTube. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know, it hasn't reached my vision yet. And, uh, but, but I feel like I've made a lot of progress with making better content. You know, I'm not looking for clickbaity content. You know, we're not like going from cut to cut to cut like some of these TikTok guys out there because it's not content that appeals to me. The guy who watches my video is a guy who's seriously considering buying this particular car or a 911 of the world in this year, might make and model, right? So I hope you got some value from the video. Hope you enjoyed the realistic point of view drive on some country back roads. You know, I hope you that you, you understood kind of what I was referring to with some of the specking options. I really encourage you to order yours with the sport package. I encourage you to get a 4S if you can afford the extra premium because the all wheel drive is wonderful. I really encourage you to make sure that you get, you know, a nice configure you know, nice spec. Uh, black on black is a really popular one, but uh, there's a ton of great options, you know, white with red interior, etc. But overall, the value proposition of this particular car is, is just, it's, it's, it's a ton of car for the money, guys. Like for 90 to 105 to 110,000, depending on the spec, is what you're gonna typically find these right now in February. Now it is absolutely, and that's up 2024, mind you. Now it is absolutely a buyer's market right now when it comes to cars, because rates are so high, you know, dealers are not swimming in leads right now. If you've got your car listed on Facebook Marketplace, you know every, there's a ton of tire kickers, a ton of scared money out there, there's a ton of guys who like wanna buy the car, but then they take it to their credit union, they're like, oh my God, I can't afford the payment, or they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna get, they're gonna give me 80% of the car's value and I don't have enough cash to make the difference. That's the world we're living in right now. So if you can use that to your advantage and buy one of these and get a good deal on it, I mean, now's the time to pounce, guys, okay? If you wait till spring, you know, you start buying these cars when rates go back down, because they're gonna go down as soon. Everything's gonna roll over, don't worry. The Fed will only cut when the market rolls over. So when it does, and it loses that 15 to 25%, then the Fed comes out and says, oh, we're gonna do 1% cut, right? So that's gonna drop everything else in the car market will then respond accordingly. So if rates go down 2%, the price of the vehicle might go up 2% or 5% or 10%, right? And that's the way it works. So so this is a car where you don't have to pay over MSRP. You get a nice value proposition. Like I said, in the 90,000 range, you get a ton of performance. I'm a big fan of having the turbo. I like the torque. I like the driving experience. I like the fuel economy. Uh, do I like the old school Porsches too? Absolutely, don't get me wrong. But if you want that experience with the 991.2, get the GT3, get the manual, You know, get the one that has the four liter, right? Makes 500 horsepower. Yeah, they're $200,000, 185 to 210, 220, depending on the spec, right? PTS, et cetera. But if you can afford that car, I mean, awesome, right? But the bottom line is you don't need 500 horsepower for the street. I mean, are you really tracking your $200,000 991.2 all the time? I mean, really? If you are, go in the comments, tell me because you are a total boss. If you got the kind of cheddar to you know, burn through those tires, burn through those brakes, afford the insurance, and track your, you know, your GT3 Porsche that you spent a quarter million dollars on, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times a year, you are the man, okay? I love you, you could be my best friend. But for everybody else in the world, right, this is really where you're living and breathing. This is the kind of car that is absolutely going to give it to you on the track, smoke 90% of the cars on the track, and if you're a good driver, trust me, this car is gonna give it to you. With that rear steering, ugh, that torque, 
you're just, it's just gonna eat everything on the track. Not, not even an issue. Way more, frankly, than the older generations because those there's just nobody home at two, three, four thousand RPM. So that made it hard on the track because you really had to keep those RPMs up, which means you have to nail the shifts perfectly. If you don't, if you can't rev match, you're really going to lose a lot of time coming out of these turns. Whereas this car, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you can go into a turn one or even two gears higher and still power out and have plenty of performance. I think that's really cool. So anyway, those are my thoughts. I could talk all day. I could talk all day about Porsches. I am so passionate about cars in general, but specifically these cars, because damn it, Porsche, you know, Andres and all these guys over there, you guys make such a great product. I really appreciate it. It, it, it just keep making great products, keep making internal combustion engines as long as we can, because we'll keep buying them. Us car enthusiasts will keep enjoying them. That's it for me, guys. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed my shot here in the HQ. Hopefully the audio is not too bad, and we will catch you on the next one. I'll talk to you later.